Saturday, September 19th, Spontanea Nation will be part of the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. See the show perform the way we do it in the studio, either in person or via live stream. With special guests Craig Kakowski, Matt Gorley, Janet Varney, and more. Get tickets to the live show and or the live stream at LAPodfest.com. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome all of yous. As we said back in Philadelphia times, it's our own version of y'all, but more urbane and uh, citified. Boo! What a clunker right out of the gate. <laughs> Hubris. That's what that was. I woke up today and I was like, <laughs> the intro to the podcast today is going to be the best one I've ever done. I'm going to start off with yous and then just see where my genius mind takes me. Well, like our old friend Icarus, I built some wax wings, flew too close to the sun. Or, wasn't there a guy who built a wax car and drove too close to the sun? How old are cars? I know they're not in the Bible, but they should be. Don't you wish cars were in the Bible? <laughs> don't, you, don't you wish that the, right before Christ's crucifixion, there was a high-speed chase? <laughs> Where he and the apostles were trying to get away. And then, like, they're, like, Peter hangs out the window and he, I don't know, what, they throw spears, I guess? <laughs> Ah, oh. now would Christ drive? I like to think that he would. I like to think that Christ would have his hands at 10 and 2. He'd do all the looking you're supposed to look. Like he would do, look over there, then look over there. Look back over there. I think even he, if he arrived first at the four-way stop... He'd wave everybody else through. That's why he's my hero. My hero used to be actor Alfred Molina for his sympathetic portrayal of supervillain Dr. Octopus. I thought that guy is really putting his career on the line. A lot of people are going to hate him after this. You know how there'll be, in the old days, when people did soap operas, People that watch soap operas would see them on the street. They walk up and slap their faces if they were playing a villain or something. Because people are insane and they can't differentiate between reality and entertainment. I'm like that for sure. Cartoons scare me. Because they it sort of looks like our world, but not. And what what determines your ending up there? That's why the movie Space Jam is the most terrifying horror movie ever created. Lovable curmudgeon Bill Murray. Perhaps because he makes everyone reach him through an 800 number is banished to a strange mirror world. Where people from cheaply made clothing wander around wisecracking at each other. Who was not in Space Jam that should have been? Let's settle this once and for all. Obviously, the Harlem Globetrotters should have been there. They had their own cartoon. Would it have killed whoever was president at the time to make a brief cameo? Was it Clinton? Thank you, Bugs. Thank you for saving the game of basketball. Uh, now I can't watch Space Jam ever again. And I, believe me, I watch it all the time. Because I'll, I'll always feel that that was missing. Bill, Bill Clinton thanking Bugs Bunny for saving the game of basketball. I might have said baseball earlier. <laughs> Why is there no Space Jam of baseball? Bugs Bunny did that one baseball cartoon 
where he was the whole team. I mean, come on, guys. Why wasn't there one, you know what, if you want soccer to catch on in America, make a soccer jam. Call it something else. I think space is not a basketball term. I think space came from the fact that they were in space. Jam is the basketball term. You jam the ball into the basket. That's very crude. Ah, round ball. Well, I think I rescued that monologue. And it ended up being not but net. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneation with Paul F. Tompkins. I'm the second part. Playing piano over there is Mr. Eben Schletter. Eben, I wish I could have timed your name better so it could have you could have smoothly done your little hello. But I feel like I caught you. It was like you were trying to leave and then you <laughs> were summoned back in. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Okay. What happens on this show is I interview a special guest. We have a freeform chat. It begins with a question from our previous guest, and then later on, some improviser pals and I will create a story. We'll create a whole world. Don't you dare shut your eyes. <laughs> you can shut your eyes. In fact, you should. Listen to this with your eyes closed. Even if you're in a car. I don't give a fuck. Punk rock, man. Punk rock. Remember how punk rockers were all in favor of vehicular manslaughter? That was a big part of their deal. All right. Anyway, let me introduce my special guest. This gentleman is a very funny man who is the creator of one of my favorite television series of all time, Drunk History. I absolutely adore it. And what a treat it is to have this gentleman here with us. What is his name, you ask? Why, I'll tell you. <clears throat> His name, of course, is... Daryl Walters. No, no. That's pretty close. Okay, That's sorry. very close. I pronounce it Derek Waters. Oh, right. Okay. Does that seem familiar? And that now I know. Now I remember. Derek. Sorry. Thank you. Derek, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, it's so far, it's been a delight. Nothing but net. That's exactly right. Space Jam. Do you enjoy the game of basketball or the movie Space Jam? I've never seen Space Jam, but I did have a shirt that was titled Hair Jordan, and it was uh, Michael Jordan holding Bugs Bunny going for the dunk. And I think that's what Space Jam was, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about a titled shirt that changed the world. But I remember there was a game called NBA Jam, and that's mm -hmm. where jam, to me, fit into basketball. I don't know. NBA Jam? NBA. Oh, N. Yeah, sorry. I'm not like not an MBA, the degree you get. Is that a business degree? Or that drug people take. Um, <laughs> is that MBA? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. rolling on MBA right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, MBA Jam was a four-player uh, stand-up arcade machine I really liked. <laughs> it does sound like fun. <laughs> Anyone that says a four-player stand-up machine, they have to like it. It would be weird if I knew a lot about it. I'm like, I hated that fucking <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know about your upbringing. Maybe no. you had three brothers who forced you to play that game so that they could complete the quad. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Derek, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, I, okay. But I'm glad that we got to talk about that. Likewise. I did want to ask you, this is a question from our previous episode's guest. Can I know the guest or no? You can know the guest. Okay. And so can the listener. If they go to our back catalog online, <laughs> hours of listening pleasure await you. Derek, what Point was the yeah. what was, <laughs> it's it's a setup really? Okay, I got you. What was the last thing you've done that you considered brave? Oh. Is there a thing? It could be anything in your life where, after doing it, you were able to say, "Wow, I cannot believe I did that." Kudos to me. Oh man. Great question. It's a Last really guest. good question. It's a really good question. Last guest. Not trying to be funny. <laughs> trying to get to the real, real early in the interview. Man, 
Um, this is hard. I tell you what, Derek, I, if it makes it easier for you, you, you can also answer it with whatever it makes you think of. If there's a moment that you were not brave, where you wish you had been brave, if mm. there is, if there is an ongoing thing where you find it difficult to be brave. Oh man, um, did that make it worse? I no, no. I, well, when I when I think of brave, I think of standing up for something that you believe in that um, may not be an easy uh, thing to let other people know that you're for, mm -hmm. and um, going against odds knowing that you don't know what the outcome is going to be but you have to do what's inside of your heart that um, is one thing um there is I've also just never done that. well there there is also i do it every day there, <laughs> every day i'm brave so for you I this question is it's difficult to narrow down the instances I, i'm in which brave, you every, brave yeah coming here is brave I always go to that wrong parking place and I got a reverse and go in the other one. That was pretty brave. There could have been oncoming traffic. Um, it Can I say, though, in all seriousness, it is somewhat brave to come here because you don't know what's going to happen. And anytime you're putting yourself in, the, in a public forum, you're putting yourself in front of an audience, there is a certain amount of bravery that maybe you get used to. Mm -hmm. But certainly there's a time when it's a big deal to, to go out there and do it. I also have a hard time talking about something that is like, oh, can I tell you this one time I did something really good? But but I'm but, being honest. I uh, know, I know, but but you don't. I I, I think you're narrowing it to uh, a moral thing right. as opposed to it could be like a fear of flying thing. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. there's many there's many there's many ways in which we are challenged every day that maybe we get used to just living in a way that's like I'm afraid of that thing and that's just the way it is. But uh, periodically throughout our lives, I think, we are called upon to maybe overcome that obstacle. I did something very recently that uh, was go. brave. Here was I was in yeah. Austin, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> oh, very brave. I no, but I... <laughs> I always do that for flashbacks. <laughs> I like that. Oh, what a night. Um, no, it was uh, last or two weeks ago. It's August now. Um, when uh, I went to... Austin to do a panel for uh, Drunk History, and I went with uh, Duncan Trussell to this place called a def deprivation. Def what is it? Deprivation tank. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? I have not. I, I would do it though. It seemed, I'm actually seems I get claustrophobic. Oh, there you very, go. This was the thing that uh, you're in this tank for an hour, mm -hmm. and you are floating, and. Um, so many th I have a bad stomach. I thought what would happen if that happened in there that would be awful and I just tried to say shut up and get in there and relax. Mm -hmm. And whatever is in that water must be the most toxic thing in the world because they're like, well, if you do get water in your eyes, get out immediately and squirt this water <laughs> in your ear. Uh, you can wear earplugs and so no water gets in your ear. Um, and if it gets in your mouth, you know, spit out. And I was like, oh. so that was about 20 minutes of me laying in this tank to relax with my shoulders up, trying not to get anything in my mouth. And I was shrugging the whole time. And then I realized, like, stop shrugging. And I just relaxed. And um, I'm not one of those people that has incense burning in my place and talks about the human body all the time. But the body is amazing <laughs> that it, it gives you answers of how you feel. Like, uh -huh. I'm always like uptight. Mm -hmm. I talk laid back because I'm so uptight and I don't want anyone to know how uptight I am. That's very honest. And this floating tank, <laughs> I was scared of. And the coolest thing about it is there were about three or four times that happened in the hour where I realized, oh my God, for about 15 seconds ago, I wasn't thinking about anything. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I guess it was brave because I was getting into something I didn't know what was going to happen and being shut in a tank really freaked me out. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. th I think that qualifies under our definition of Sorry, it of took bravery. me an hour to bring that out. Derek, I talk slow. Okay. I think just like at my voice. <laughs> That's what I've always admired about you is what you hear is what you get. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there must be some sort of chemical that, uh, that uh, forces you to become buoyant. bath salt or – But 
why so many warnings about if it gets into any of your orifices? I th- I think they've had some complaints or something. I don't know. I mean, I I know, but it, they don't. But they don't tell you, hey, it's just salt water, like in the ocean. No, no, they they just say don't don't put that in your mouth. Don't because I kept thinking, oh, what if I fall asleep and flip over? And it's two, three inches of water, so it's right. impossible to do that. But it's great. I highly recommend it. Go after your fear of being shut in a tank and thinking about your thoughts. What it's was great. It, what was it like? What was the turning point where you where you were able to do it? Oh, while in there, or well, the- and, and it, because to to even get in that tank in the first place, is it like you negotiate with yourself and you say, "I'll take it this far, and if I don't like it, I'll get out. I'll take it this far, and if I don't like it, I'll stop." I think it's just like when you have a friend like Duncan Trussell, he's a very warm person that I just trusted that if he enjoyed it, I want to be open-minded right. to trying it. But it, I don't. I wouldn't have gone there on my own will. And Ru- Duncan is a is a very um, is a very spiritual and a very uh, caring person. I think extremely. I, I tell him all the time he has Koresh qualities. You cannot. <laughs> you have way too many. Qualities that you are, you are a leader. Don't abuse it. And he doesn't. He's a great leader. <laughs> he's a good dude. He's a great dude. And he's very much a seeker. He's always looking for experiences like that. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever had somebody in your life who was the opposite of that? Someone mm. who was get, always getting you into trouble? All the time. Or were yes. you that person for someone else? No. No. I was not a troublemaker. Maybe like in school, like uh, fooling around and stuff. But I never got in trouble. I've never been arrested. I, I'm trying to think of uh, one time. I got a citation when I was 18 for being a witness to beer. It literally said that on the citation that I wasn't drinking beer, but I was at a party where I made eye contact with a beer. That it said, Derek Waters witnessed beer. I still have the citation. Because I had to go to court, and it was down in Ocean City where my grandparents lived, and my grandfather will always be my hero. And then here's this man. He's got, he doesn't know why. He th- thinks I got drunk. Right. And, you know, now I got to go to court. But I'll never forget in court, the judge goes, okay, you all are here for the same reason. It's a 3 4 7 2. Basically, I'm going to give that to you. And all this is saying is you made a mistake. When you come back to Ocean City, don't drink. Okay? Great. So everyone come up, Natalie, blah, blah. Uh, do you understand the 3 4 7 2? Yes. And it went through like 20 kids. And then this one girl gets up and he's like, You're getting the 3 4 7 2. Do you understand what that is? She goes, No. And he just takes like all the papers that he's on the judge and throws them down. He goes, Let's just say Santa's coming a month early. Let's just say your birthday's happening four times this year. And went into all these analogies. And I was like, Oh man, this is great. But uh, yeah, that's, wait, I don't get the analogy. No, I think he was just saying like you're getting off, and I, he was <laughs> trying to come up with really great ways of explaining to get off. And uh, yeah, Christmas Christmas is coming a month early. Is the one I I really remember. Does that make sense? I would be worried though, because for a second I was thinking, oh good, this girl is asking what the three four seven two is, because mm-hmm. I, I I would be afraid there would be hidden language in there. And then you're you're agreeing to some sort of Shirley Jackson's The Lottery situation. Right. Where it's like, yeah, and then you come here and we can stone you to death <laughs> so that our crops will grow. She was just asking questions. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Judges but, don't like that. Yeah, but they have not come after me since then. No, I <laughs> – but they, trouble. They yeah. have not the Ocean City authorities. Yeah, yeah. I've I've witnessed a lot of beer since then, <laughs> and, and I've, I'm not incarcerated. So you were at a party where kids were drinking. Yeah. And even though you did not have a beer in your hand. If I was blind, I wouldn't have a citation <laughs> because I could see. So they're they're comparing you to like <laughs> – it's <laughs> like uh, I saw people drinking beer and I said nothing. Right. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I think it was a dare. Uh, I think it was a dare thing. Did you not drink then? No, I actually didn't drink for a really long time. I would drink, drink casually – in high school, and then I moved to Toronto when I was 19, and you're allowed to drink there when you're 18 mm-hmm. or maybe 20. I think it's 18, and I didn't drink at all. I didn't start drinking until I started um, failing out here. <laughs> but I'm being honest. Until shit started going bad, that's when I was like, oh, might as well have one of those things. It's the perfect time. Yeah. But now now that things are going better, do you continue to drink? Unfor- that's how I get paid. <laughs> If I, I only drink when I have to work. It's the saddest thing. <laughs> but now, to be fair, 
when the other people are drinking, yeah. you technically don't have to drink. Don't have to. The word is half. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say this for because uh, I <laughs> people always say you don't have to drink with them, and I say I know, but will you watch what happens when I don't drink with them? It's one is the feeling of being exploited and being a little self conscious of that you're being filmed and you're alone and there's nothing worse than that and I don't want to do that. So Oh, do I, you you feel like you're exploited? The person will feel exploited. I want them to feel like we're doing this together. Right. Like we're both on the same page and we're we we're a team and it's not doing that to be nice. It's also doing that because you know, the performance is different too because the first half is uh, any human being with alcohol in them and a camera is they're going to want to try to be funny and that's natural. So I want to like have that feeling too with them and then once we get through that, then it's like, okay, now we have a job to do. And so, yeah, of all the – for the internet shorts and the ones on TV, we, uh, we've we done 100. So Wow. Really? Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's brave I guess. <laughs> You should have just let off with that one. That is the bravest yeah, thing of all. what an asshole if I started <laughs> uh, Derek, but, the uh, uh, Drunk History, this is the third season? Season yes? three, yes. That's airing right now, I believe. It will start um, – Oh, it hasn't started yet. It will start uh, this Tuesday, September 1st. Tuesday, September 1st. Fantastic. Do you mm -hmm. know – can you tell me who is on that first – that season opener? Are we allowed to change this later? <laughs> <laughs> if we have well, to. it's because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Miami. Tell, uh, tell me, tell me who is coming up in this. Season. Oh, this season, Paul is a real fun season. <laughs> you know, you have to like start doing PR. You know, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't really like. I've been told like maybe you should take like a media class on things, and because my voice is fucking boring, I'll never like. But if I, I was like so. this season, let me just try. Can I just try? Yeah. I took a media class this morning at six. This at morning. The DMV. This guy was really great. He helped me out. What? And then, yeah. You got to find these guys. They're everywhere. Um, no, I was just trying to be funny. Um, <laughs> This season. Ahead, yeah. um, Sorry. Paul, ahead, thanks. Uh, Derek, Paul. Derek Waters, thanks for being here. Hey, Drug History is a lot of fun show. Uh, 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 you know, I, are those people really drunk? Okay. So, uh, Derek, <laughs> who do you got coming up? Who are some of the guest stars we're going to see on this series, uh, season of Drug History? Paul, this season really excites me. I mean, every season has been really fun, but this one is going to knock the socks off of you. Hey, are you making fun of my voice? Because Not at it all. it sort of sounds like you are. Not at all. Okay. This is how I talk. Uh, this is how I was born. That's very strange that we both talk the same way. I like it. <laughs> This season we have Oscar winner Octavia Spencer. You may know her from The Help. We also have... I know her from Snowpiercer, but go on. Oh, okay. Point taken. Um, <laughs> from Bridesmaids, we have Maya Rudolph. From SNL alumni, we have Horatio Sands. We also have the one and only Mr. Will Ferrell. That's right. <laughs> Old school. Uh, <laughs> We have, uh, as the ladies call him, Josh Hotnit, Josh Hartnett <laughs> from Pearl Harbor. Uh, we <laughs> Three more. Three more. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, we also have, um, you may know him as Gus from Breaking Bad, but we know him as John Carlo Esposito. <laughs> Watch out for your meth, honey. Uh <laughs> Is that the unofficial catchphrase of the season? Watch out for your meth, honey. <laughs> I gotta always talk like that. It's fun. Do you see why those guys make a living doing that and why they get up at 4 a.m.? Derek, <laughs> I, I, thank I, you so much for being here. Thank you. Where can people find you online? Uh, people can find me online on um, uh, Twitter, uh, Derek <laughs> Waters with two S's. Don't ask. <laughs> There we go. I'm it's a like snake. it's a great name that you don't want to stop saying. <laughs> Which one? Derek Waters with <laughs> with two S's. What were we just talking about, Derek? You're making me very angry. I have ADD. Well, certainly drinking is the right thing to do for that. Derek, thank you for being here. Thank you, Paul. And you guys will see Paul F. Tompkins this season on Drunk History. That's very true. I'm one of the drunk storytellers. It's amazing. You're gonna I, be very happy. I. Man, I fucking better be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will have secured a location from Derek Waters that will provide the, lo the setting for our, I was going to say backdrop. 
it's not the backdrop. It will provide the setting for our improv, and we will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Whee! Hey, Dolores, do you like football? Mitch, we are at a football game. So I'm happy to say that, yes, I do like football. And for once, your random conversation starter syncs with reality. Well, there's only a few more preseason games to go before the regular football season kicks off. And you could start the season by winning $2 million in week one at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. I have actually been thinking about getting into fantasy football. Mitch, you're on a roll. It's the biggest fantasy football contest ever. $10 million in prizes are up for grabs, including $2 million for first place and $1 million for second. That's a lot of money. Mitch, I am more interested than ever in what you have to say. Please go on. One week fantasy means no season long commitments. It's fantasy football on demand. Play where you want, when you want, with the players you want. Just pick your players, pile up the points, and pick up your cash. That's it. This sounds not only simple, but also like a lot of fun. Forgive my mixed metaphor, but Mitch, this is a home run. You've never experienced football like this. Every game feels like the playoffs, even in week one. And every broken tackle, a spectacular catch could take you closer to a $2 million prize. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code PFT to play free for a shot at $2 million in the week one millionaire maker. Enter PFT for free entry now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. I will go there. Thank you, Mitch. This isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. Mitch, look up there. Is it just me or does it seem like the Goodyear blimp is on a collision course with this stadium? Oh, hello all. It is I, the contraption air for Oxybump. Do you suffer from ailments of the allergic variety? No shame in that. We're all human, be we builders of contraptions or kings of vast and storied realms. Thankfully, for all of us, there is a new contraption called Oxybump. All natural and unique, only Oxybump harnesses the power of oxygen to treat nasal congestion and sore throat. Now, there's a bunch of oxygen all over the place. Why not make it work for us? This certainly sounds better than the contraption I was working on, a helium-based cure for polio, which I abandoned not because I didn't believe in the idea, but because my nephew had the decency to direct me to the Wikipedia page for one Dr. Jonas Salk. Fair play to you, sir. I know when I am licked, and I have spared many people the humiliation of a comically high-pitched voice. The Oxybump product line includes a children's cold and flu nasal spray, a sore throat spray, a hay fever allergy spray, and sinus congestion relief. I will assume that's a spray as well, although the copy does not elucidate. Oxybump is infused with the finest source plant and mineral extracts and provides safe, non-addictive relief of congestion, allergies, cold, and sore throat. Making the earth work for you, it's what farmers call the sweetest revenge. Oxybump is available nationwide at Target. Just look for the bright and fun color boxes in the cough cold allergy aisle now they did not have to make the boxes fun colors that extra step taking is the mark of a true contraptionist wary of stores whose names bring to mind the ancient sport of archery go to oxybump.com and enter code pft20 for 20 percent off oxybump oxygen powered relief good day and good contraptioneering to us all Man, I could listen to those ads all day long. <laughs> it feels like I record them all day long. Oh, well, <laughs> what are you going to do? This is the life we've chosen. Welcome back, everybody. It is time to meet our pals from the world of pretend. <laughs> Sitting to my right, miming piano playing on the desk. Desk, I guess it's a table. It's not really a desk, right? Who cares? Could that be interesting to anyone listening right now? <laughs> well, I would need to know is it a desk or a table? We'll take a vote later. Well, at the end of the episode, we'll take a vote if people consider this a desk or a table. Just so whoever's listening does not have to wash their hands 50 times. She is one of my colleagues on the Know You Shut Up program. As of this recording, we are still waiting to see if <laughs> season four is a go. Everyone keeps saying that it is, but you kind of have to say officially, yes, it is. 
She is so very dear to me. Please say hello to Colleen Smith. Hello. Colleen, welcome back to the show. Hello. It's always lovely to see you. Mm -hmm. How have you been since the last time I've seen you? Um, I'm trying to think. Of, ooh, I signed up for this. This is like an ad for something, but Class Pass. Has anybody heard about Class Pass? What's Class Pass? You pay like ninety nine dollars a month, and then you can go to all these different workout studios in your area, and you can only go to the same one three times within your month. Mm -hmm. But I've done like Pilates and yoga and bar classes and weird CrossFit things. So my entire just it's only been a week, but my entire body is like in pain and stuff. But that's. <laughs> That's all my mind is about right now. Is that it's class pass? It's like how many, many times I can do plank in a week, <laughs> and how much I hate it, and how weak my abdominal muscles are. But plank is a thing you can do famously anywhere, isn't that correct? You can plank anywhere, but you can't plank. I can't plank for longer than a minute, and there are a lot of classes that want you to plank for like three minutes straight. But then, but these are not plank classes. This is where this is a class where plank is part of yeah. the curriculum. But like everybody's hot for plank because it's one. Of, it's like plank, <laughs> squat. I'm H for P. And and I think push ups are those like magical exercises that work out every part of your body. Right. So that it's every class, no matter where you go, you're like, maybe I'll get a break from plank because we should be doing <laughs> kettlebells. And then it's like, let's do some plank. And you're <laughs> Now, plank is like a frozen push-up, right? You yeah, just... you're to the top of a push-up. But then they'll variant. Like, they'll be like... Plank lift... variants. Yeah, they'll be like, lift up your left leg. Now, like, rock back and forth. Now, put it down. Or keep lifting your left leg, but only from your butt. So you're working your glute. It's a nightmare. Can I tell you, I did a, a yoga class one time. I did a couple yoga classes because I thought that would be a good thing that I could do. Like, if I'm traveling, I could do that in my hotel room. You yeah. know what I mean? And also that th there would be a meditative aspect that I could benefit from. And I had a really hard time with it. But there was one I went to that was I, – first I went to one that was way too hard. My wife should have warned me. <laughs> then where, where literally people were on one palm raised in the air. Oh. It was like, what's happening? <laughs> then I did – and then I did a beginner one that was almost insultingly childish. <laughs> it was like, come on. And then I realized at a certain point she was, the instructor was saying, do this, do that. And I was like, she's making this shit up. <laughs> this isn't a thing. <laughs> There was one was like, uh, like the, I think it was more the way she said it was like, and then uh, lift your left leg up. I'm like, what? <laughs> Let's try that. Let's see how that works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what haven't I done yet? Well, you look terrific. I hope you feel good. I do. I feel sore and good. <laughs> it's nice to have a good soreness sometimes. Yeah. And when you're drinking, you feel better about it. That's right. Because you're like, this hurts. I worked out. I so earned now it. I can drink I, white wine. I earned it. White <laughs> wine. <laughs> I, and of course, Colleen, as always, a classic white wine drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting across from me, he's on his phone, so I guess this is not going so well. <laughs> he I gotta call you back. is my <laughs> 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 he is my colleague in the thrilling adventure hour. You know him from Brooklyn Nine Nine, from Twenty Two Jump Street, everything with numbers in it. <laughs> <laughs> Please say hello to Mark Evan Jackson. Hello, Paul. Hello, Mark. Welcome back to Spontaneous. Thank Nation. you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you. This is really fun. I'm looking forward to this. Is this this is not the first time I've seen you since we've been back from the Southern Hemisphere? No, I think I've seen you uh, once since then. Yes, since then. and we compared notes on horrific jet lag. Like delayed, weird jet lag. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wednesday through Saturday. Yeah. Not good. Oh, it was terrible. Mark, how have you been since I've seen you last? Uh, very well, thank you. Working a little bit, doing stuff. You're very modest. You're hiding your light under a bushel. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, you are the new Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> if that's true, that's fantastic. <laughs> and I got to make a couple calls. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no one's told you yet? No. Oh, my God. Oh, I wish that were true. It was on Deadline.com. <laughs> oh, I wish that were true. Wouldn't that be great? I heard you ankled the sked at uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> when does it bow? <laughs> I'll have to ask the prexy. <laughs> These are all dumb showbiz terms that no one needs to know. Nobody <laughs> understands. Uh, Mark, thank you for being here as always. I'm thrilled. Thank you very much. We're going to have a good time. Uh, that's why I've come. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to pitch a Wang Dang Doodle. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Is that the Nuge? I think it might be. Or is it Skinner? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I think it's Ted Nugent. Listen, guess what, everybody? We got a newcomer here. Whoa. -oh. An outsider. Whoa. -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting kitty corner for me. <laughs> meow, meow. Meow. <laughs> this 
talented improviser mm-hmm. I've only really met very recently. Mm-hmm. And yet we were separated <laughs> by a person in common. Why did he keep us apart, Carla? I don't know. He doesn't like me to meet his friends, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Please say hello to our new friend, Carla Kakowski. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Carla, hello. thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, it is interesting to point out this is our first all redhead panel. Oh. <clears throat> Do you consider your hair to be red? It's reddish. I don't think I'm a true redhead. But well, my brother honey, is. Is. So. is he really? <laughs> now, his name is Carl Kakowski. Isn't that strange? Mm, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> my father's name is Carl, actually. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. What is your maiden name, Carl? Snowden. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I wish I'd <laughs> now worn my you know. monocle. <laughs> Google it. So, see, I, isn't that funny? I think of that as a classy name because I'm from a, a different generation when automatically, of course, we should be thinking traitor to America. <laughs> Are you related to Edward Snowden? <laughs> Is he your brother? Uh, no. That would be so cool. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Eddie Snows. Yeah. Uh, what is your brother's name? Tom. Thomas. Thomas Snowden. Mm-hmm. That's very posh sounding. Yeah. We're from Kentucky, so I guess we're the opposite of that. <laughs> Kentucks. <laughs> yeah. How long? When did you move here? Uh, or did you move, where did you move from? Where did you move to first? I moved to Chicago first. Sure. Where you studied improvisation comedy. Yes. That's where you do it, I'm told, <laughs> initially. And then you move to L.A., <laughs> and that's what I did. No New York time. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Direct to L.A., do not pass go. Yep. It's going really well, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived here now? 12 years. Did you and Craig move out here together? Did you no. meet Craig out here? He was my improv teacher. Oh. Oh, this is a scandal. <laughs> Craig Kukowski, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> listeners, Thank you so much. <laughs> the listeners may recall Craig Kukowski having appeared on this program. Uh, full disclosure, Craig and Carla are husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Fuller disclosure, they met under creepy circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So now, did you start dating after he was done teaching you? Yes, we did. And then it was time for you to t- teach him a thing or two <laughs> about love. Maybe. Maybe he would say that. <laughs> I'm getting red. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep the lights low in here. Because I like to mortify people, but I don't like to know that they're being mortified. Yeah, I thought it was romantic. It is romantic, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the turn in your backlit. You have like, this lovely yeah, I know. glow. I look like a saint. Yep. I look like a sexy saint. <laughs> have you ever described the seance like conditions during the recordings of Spontaneous Nation? Um, the lights are very low here. We ha- I brought in uh, to the studio. Uh, I brought in three uh, floor lamps and some uh, electronic candles that we light up. Oh, yeah. And it's very, uh, it's very cozy and comfortable in here. It's lovely. It's mm-hmm. lovely. Mm-hmm. Somebody, somebody on uh, the Earwolf forums asked, what's up with the uh, weird lighting? Mm. And I said, I prefer to think of it as nice lighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just need some white wine. I know. Right? Mm-hmm. You guys. Maybe that's the next step. The next, ne- next recording, I'm going to bring in white wine. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be a fight. Like, Colleen, did you go through a bottle already? And be like, shut up. I got things to do. I wish I could develop a taste for white wine, but it all just tastes like white wine to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Nope. Where it's like yeah. people say, taste this one, because this one's crisp with a buttery finish. <laughs> tastes like every white wine I've ever had. <laughs> I, red wine, it took me a long time to develop a taste for because up to about, I would say, five years ago, I'd only ever had <laughs> comedy club wine. Oh, yeah. So I didn't know wine could ever be good. Yeah. I was like, well, you know what wine is. It tastes like vinegar. <laughs> you have to put uh, plastic wrap <laughs> over the bottle at the end of the night. <laughs> The fruit flies. Yeah, it's, in, it's, in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, Red a bo- wine cold. A bottle lasts for two months. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we didn't come here to talk about that shit. We came here to improvise a story based on Derek's location. Uh, now, throughout the story, listeners, you will hear sound effects to aid us in our storytelling. If a scene is is going on and then there's another scene happening concurrently like two things that are happening in different places at the same time you'll hear this cut to sound effect if we heaven thank you for respectfully bowing out during the sound effects (laughs) 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 we had many many complaints like I'm trying to memorize those sound effects but that goddamn piano is ruining it for me If we want to, if somebody has a memory, a character has a memory, or we're going to tell a story of how something came to be in a scene, we have this flashback sound effect. Harp, classic sound effect instrument. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, Oboe. Your audition was not a success. <laughs> If we're going to return to the present day from a flashback or we are going to travel into the future, you will hear this flash forward sound effect. It sounds mysterious, just like the future. Cut to flashback, flash forward. <laughs> okay, if you're having trouble, ask your teacher or a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. It is time to begin our story. And our story takes place, thanks to Derek Waters, our story takes place in a Miami record store in 1967. We take you now to a Miami record store in 1967. Dad, I, I just wish you would let me choose my own music. I, I have really good taste and... And I just feel like you need to give me this liberty to choose my own stuff. Liberty? Oh, our tax dollars at work. You know what? You <laughs> can... <laughs> please, please don't talk about taxes again, Dad. Let me tell you about taxes. <laughs> please. You can, you can buy your own music when you get a job. All this, oh, I'm what? I'm eight years old. I'm eight years old. All right. Um, uh, excuse me. I, I'm, I overheard your conversation. Are you a single father? <laughs> Oh God! I can be. <laughs> what? Um, you you can be. <clears throat> what? Uh, I, I just. Um, Sorry, I'm flustered. Uh, <laughs> well, it's hot. You know, it's Miami, so. <laughs> mm. yeah. Dad, I can't take you anywhere. What? I can't take you anywhere. Look, oh, is this your daughter? What? Is this your daughter? She's way yeah. too old to be my. Uh, oh, yeah, come on. I guess. Yeah, it's my daughter. <sighs> Carolyn, say hi. 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 Um. I'm sorry to be so forward. Um, you have really pretty eyes. Oh, thank you. Uh, and a really pretty dress. Thank you. You're really pretty. Thank you. I feel all that stuff. <laughs> Do you flirt really well through your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Dad, I'm trying to make a friend. God. <laughs> make a friend. Our tax dollars are work. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? Hmm? Huh? I'm sorry. I'm nervous. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, just... Hello. Oh, hello. May I help you find anything? <laughs> Would you oh. like to purchase some musics? <laughs> oh, uh. well, I was just <laughs> looking for a new husband, but now there's two suitors in the oh. mix. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I do not know. This is not the husband store. It is a record store. Are you looking for music to buy? I am. I'm looking for Janis Joplin. That's the one I want, Dad. Janis Joplin? Yes. Janis. <laughs> yes. Was I saying it wrong this whole time? And, and, and <clears throat> spare no expense, please. My, my daughter's welcome to have whatever... Uh, Whatever records at whatever price. Oh, this, Ooh, is, this is your daughter. That's correct, yeah. She's How old are you? I'm 15. Oh. 15, almost a woman. She's growing up so fast. Well, I am. I'm growing really fast. For you, it must be like uh, the hourglass going so quickly, the grains. And you cannot believe you look in the mirror and you see an old man looking back at you. Wow, you're... Juicy? You think I'm an hourglass? <laughs> Well, so many misinterpretations. It's amazing. I'm an hourglass? Did you call my daughter Juicy? I did, I did not. <laughs> Forgive me. It is my uh, accent. And uh, sometimes it <laughs> makes it seem as if I'm saying something else than what I'm saying. I thought I was just a matchstick, but I'm an hourglass? <laughs> I, that seems like a private conversation <laughs> that you should have with your dad. My dad doesn't like to have conversations with me. Uh, have conversations. <laughs> Honey, uh, your father won't talk to you about this because uh, your father is a repressed asshole. Um, oh, that's oh why I God. left him. Yeah. Um, all right, here's how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, you start bleeding. Oh, uh, God. Men come sniffing around. Oh, no. You swell in areas. No. Uh, you give them a child, and then they abandon you oh, because God. your vagina's too large. <laughs> Uh, Ma. Yeah, you have any can, other questions? Can we just get back to the movie? Uh, well, uh, the theater needs to hear it. No, Ma. <laughs> Everyone's please confused. Sit down. Please I mean, sit look down. at that actor. He's in, clearly in his 60s, and his co star's in her 20s. Hey, we're trying to watch this. Shut up. Oh, you know what? You know what I'm trying to do? Go through menopause. No. All right, can we turn the air conditioning up? <laughs> Don't do it here. No, I can't control where it happens. What parts do you bloat in? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> all right. See, someone who wants to learn. You bloat in your uh, your breasts 
and your ass and then your upper thighs. No one knows why. Uh, then lo- slowly your knees expand and it's you're a joke pulling. Question. Oh Mom. well, I don't get sarcasm. You're Mom. ruining this year's James Bond film for me. Ugh. <laughs> what a current film. <laughs> So yeah, I, no spare, no expense, please. She's a well-educated girl that obviously understands the finer parts of human sex. Well, the, the records, uh, they all cost pretty much the same thing, so... Well, what do you think I should get? Well, What uh, would uh, help my music tastes? Tell me, tell me about yourself. Uh, why are you attracted to uh, the music of uh, Janis Joplin? Oh, because she just, she goes for it. She's not, she's not scared. She's super brave. And she Shh. goes out there and she just takes it by the balls and she throws okay. it around. All right. Takes, takes you by the balls, our tax dollars. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> stop embarrassing me. I call to order this 1967 congressional meeting on tax spending and uh, tax allocations. I'm uh, clearly a man because it is 1967. Yes, we're all clearly no women. We're, we're men. We're men. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to s- discuss how uh, tax dollars are being spent in uh, Miami. Not well. Yeah, I, I would like to make a motion. I think there's more things we could be taxing. Oh, uh, I don't think we're taxing enough things. I think we could uh, tax just people's ideas mm-hmm. or uh, <laughs> just the way they emotions? express themselves. Their emotions. Why not tax emotions? Yes. We're all men. Yeah. We are men. I'm are so men. man. My wife would have to pay a uh, nickel a day for the uh, <laughs> her fits. Uh. <laughs> Is your wife still having those fits? Honey, I'm home. Oh, hi. Calm down, honey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hi. Honey, I just say my emotions are all over the place oh, today. Oh, I'm going to my whore. Oh, no, no. Yeah, she owes me a, a real dollar fifty for that afternoon. Oh, she sounds like a real hysterical lady. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. No, but I'm sure yeah. we hear you. Mm-hmm. Simply, uh, simply to place into the record that I feel that this conversation is a very good use of our tax dollars at work. Uh, here, 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 seconded. Here. All right, so that's good. So, oh God, Dad. So yeah, she goes for it. No, really. Do you like the music of uh, Yannis Joplin? I'm not familiar with Yannis Joplin. She is, uh, sometimes they call her Pearl. She is a very uh, gritty and fiery singer. Yeah. She has a raw, naked emotion in her song. She's not one of these hippies, is she? <laughs> Some might classify her as, uh, no. as you say, a hippie. A hippie. Oh, so Our cool. Text, Neato. What else? What else inspires you? Mm. Uh, do, did you feel uh, liberated? Did you feel uh, uh, open-minded? Are you against the war? All of those things you said, plus more. <laughs> like, for example, I just feel like when I listen to her music, like I can go out and I can tell people exactly how I feel and what uh, I'm thinking about them. Oh, brother! Have you heard of this group called the Beatles? Yeah. Uh, have you heard of their latest album, Sgt. Pepper's A Lonely Hearts Club Band? I've heard of it, but I've not heard it. Well, take a look at this. It looks like a beautiful uh, piece of artwork. So many colors. The cover. Then I'll open it up for you. <gasps> and look, there's more stuff inside. <laughs> are those drugs? All of them are drugs. Oh. I tell you what, uh, if it's okay, with your father's permission. It's okay. Uh, would you like to get in one of our listening tanks? Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, okay, please. right this way. It's very experimental. Just uh, come right over here. So, so. Okay, now look, yeah. your dad. I don't like this guy. Me either. I you think... guys all right in there? We're fine. It's Thank good. you. It's good. He's trying to repress you. Yes. And this is a time of great turmoil, and especially here in Miami, I guess. Yes, <laughs> lots of. Yes. It's so hot here. People it's are really constantly... Hot. The mosquitoes are driving me crazy. <laughs> the state bird, I call them. Hey, while your uh, daughter's in that booth with that <laughs> Latina man, I just <laughs> wanted to have some alone time with you. <laughs> Were you even shopping for records? or? Um, no, I... Um, well, I I uh, I went to a women's feminist class uh, that turned out to be a, a dating course. Thank God. <laughs> um, and they said if you're looking for men, um, the best kind are the kind that have children. Hopefully oh. divorced. <laughs> you never know. Um, and then they said just go into public places mm. and approach them. So that's what I I did. Well, you are checking off each one of those boxes. <laughs> yeah. 
What, what Foxes? Hmm? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm flustered. I'm sorry, I'm so flustered right now. You're so close. That's okay, look. You smell really nice. Well, it's because I'm covering cologne. It's really good stuff. <laughs> I wear it so that people would think I smell nice. You do. Well, thank you. Mission accomplished. Now I, look. I'm feeling things. Why? Well, don't don't look. Uh, no, maybe I, maybe you misinterpret. You uh, brought me into this box, and here I am, uh, ready to jump out of it. Look, no, don't jump out of the box. I'm going to close the lid on the uh, on the uh, the the listening tank, and uh, if there is anything amiss. If uh, you feel claustrophobic, if you feel uh, uh, closed in, let's say some of the listening fluid gets into any orifice at all, uh, you need to jump out of the box immediately. And, and into uh, your arms. No. Yes. Well. <laughs> yes. Please. <laughs> oh, boy. This is... <laughs> Everything good in there? No. Uh, yes, fine, fine. I really hope this gets into my orifices. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. I'm not touching uh, that one. Okay. Closing the lid. All right? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me still? I can hear you. What is it like in there? It's very scary. I can't I can't really put my my shoulders down. I'm a little nervous. Can you come back in here with me? I'm right outside the tank. You can put my shoulders down? I, I cannot I cannot interfere with uh, your listening experience, but I want you to know I'm hugging the tank. And then her vagina got too big, and uh, <laughs> and I left her. That is the sweetest. Classic story. Yeah, most romantic story I've ever heard. <laughs> this is nice. I was not expecting to meet somebody today. Uh, do you want to go have Cuban food? Like, just, you know. Do I? <laughs> I'm sure it's fine to leave my daughter here in a I'm sure. tank full of water and <laughs> headphones. Oh, sir, sir. I'm very sorry to tell you, but uh, your daughter, I opened up the tank... And she is gone. <gasps> I'm gasping too, even though I'm the bearer of the news. But you knew it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Where did she go? She went into the listening tank? And then she disappeared? Sounds like a cliffhanger to me. <laughs> we better go to an ad. And when we return, the story will continue and then wrap up. That seems pretty logical, guys. More with our story and its eventual ending. When Spontaneous Nation returns. <laughs> Hello, friends. It is I, Paul F. Tompkins, telling you that Saturday, September 19th, Spontaneous Nation, this show that you're listening to right now, will be a part of the 2015 Los Angeles Podcast Festival. This is exciting. We are doing the show live at the Sofitel Hotel in West Hollywood, Saturday, September 19th at 9 p.m. We're going to have improvisers Craig Kakowski, Matt Gorley, and Janet Varney. We will have a special guest to be announced soon. Take it easy. And of course, Evan Schletter will be scoring it all. We are doing the show the way we do it in the studio, but with an audience presence. So if you're wondering... What it is like? What are people doing when you're listening to the show? If you're if you're if you if you're at theater of the mind, and you're like, I don't want to imagine things, <laughs> the characters that they're portraying. I just want to see people sitting there with their headphones on. Well, you'll get to see it. You'll get to see people reaching for the sound effects contraption. All of it. What does Eben do the whole time? What what do people do during my monologue? You're going to find out. I hope. Live event tickets grant admission to all 2015 LA Podcast Festival live tapings at the Sofitel Hotel, uh, September 18th, 19th, and 20th, as well as the September 19th special event stand-up Pod Smash show. All of these shows are great. This this festival includes so many of your favorite podcasts and people. Uh, this is really a very special event, and I, I am thrilled that we are part of it this year. Uh, weekend passes include access to opening night reception and the closing night party, as well as the Squarespace podcast lab. So you rub elbows with some of your favorite podcasters. And also, if you're trying to do a podcast yourself, pick up some tips and tricks and illusions. Can't make it to PodFest in person? I understand. People live all sorts of places. Not everyone lives within driving or walking distance or uh, uh, taking uh, the, uh, Los Angeles's limited <laughs> subway line. Uh, if Let's say you live all the way in another part of the world. Uh, 
Why don't you purchase the full access to this year's live video stream? You'll be able to watch all three days of live video streams of all podcasts, not just mine. Plus, you'll have an additional month of access to the archives to catch anything you might have missed. That is a great deal for some great shows that you get to see happen live. For live tickets and for streaming tickets, go to LA Podfast. Podfast. Listen, do a podcast right now. Don't listen to any more podcasts after this ad. Then when you're ready, when you feel like you have uh, truly purged your system of all podcasts and you're ready to jump into the deep end, go to LAPodFest.com and use the code PFT to buy my stream. <gasps> I, I, this has never happened before. Oh, no. I opened the tank. So she go in the tank. She listening to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh -huh. It was probably up to being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Okay, yes. And I opened yes. up just to check in. And she has disappeared. <gasps> it's like a magic trick by the amazing Harry Blackstone, a current magician <laughs> of the time, I believe. I hope so. A uh, homeless man, Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just heard this song about a lonely heart club and it really touched me and and then the first person I thought of was you you're always you're always by yourself on the street Yeah well <laughs> God has a plan for everybody Does he really? Yeah, My parents some never hearts say that. Are made to be lonely. Oh. So they can find someone to get rid of that lonely heart. You're really wise. Super wise. Hey, Ma hey Max. Hey Max. Hey Max. You got my hair one? No. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Bye. Uh, I saved this hair one for you and I. For me? Yeah. Did he have your hair one? He, he did it. I was. I was like, Hey Max. Hey Max. You and got what, my hair. What, what'd he say? He said, No. Fuck off. Oh man. Yeah. I'm classic for fucking off, but I don't want to fuck off around you. I want to get rid of that lonely heart. Hey, hey, Max. Hey, Max. Hey, Max. Oh, yeah, fucking shit. Yeah. Hey, hey, Max, you got some of that cocaine out that them, them Cubans bringing in? No, I don't have no cocaine. I got I got your tobacco that you want. Here's some chew for you. Hey, Go hey, back hey. to the farm. What's all the noise out here? You can't loiter back here behind the movie theater. We're Lonely Hearts Clubs. What? Who, who are you, young lady? Why are you soaking wet? I'm... It's been a really long day, okay? She's my wife. I am. <laughs> what? Yeah, my wife. You we've, have a hearing problem? We've been married for 10 years. You know what? I do have a bit of a hearing problem because there's some menopausal lady who's been yelling in my movie theater for weeks now. Hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you very much I for your condolences. I about that. Very relatable. No, wait a minute. You look to be a girl of about 15 years old. She's 16. I'm 16. We were married when I was six, and it's fine in Miami. This all seems like lies. No. No. Well, well I got to take it your word. All right. Well, carry on. Your husband and wife, I'm forbidden to interfere, interfere in your lives. Our tax dollars at work. Our tax dollars at work. We should probably look for her. Chase, we should look for your daughter. Yeah. Well, so no one wants Cuban food. I eventually <laughs> sure, but uh, okay. right now, okay, okay, I, I think the most important thing is to find this uh, this, uh, this gentleman. You're daughter. right. You're right. Who are you? <laughs> I can't, I, I can't wait to do this heroin stuff with you. It's just like how I've always wanted to be, like a heroine of my own story. You are a hero to me. I am. We could be heroes. <laughs> You'll learn about it in a couple of years. We could be heroes. Not yet. Not yet. But we will be. Just enjoy. And that's where I got the lyric for my song. We Mr. Bowie, yes. what a wonderful story. Thank Tell you. Tell us more of your travels to America. Well, I decided to go to Miami because I heard the Cuban food and the plantains <laughs> were delicious. Um, I was doing a new version of myself and my personality because if you don't know, I'm more of an artist than a musician. Was that when you assumed the persona of Plantains Pete? Yes. Uh, and I wore... Uh, uh, only uh, raffia, woven clothing. And uh, I understand you're going to sing for us <laughs> the ballad of Plantain's Pete. Yes. Uh, okay. Let me uh, warm up. Here is up. David Bowie as Plantain's Pete singing the ballad of Plantain's Pete. Plantain's Pete, walking on sun feet, <laughs> making decisions. 
stars are aligned in plantain's mind. Oh, that was wonderful. I'm so glad I'm high. Wow. I feel really good. Yeah, you know, instant karma's gonna get you with this. I can see everything. <laughs> yeah. I can see things inside of things. You can see clearly now that this now that the clouds have gone away, you know. Hey, and the rain. Hey, hmm. it's me. Heroin Harry. Hey, hair. The, the little Hi. imp you see when you do heroin. Wow, you're so cute. I'm pretty adorable. How's your drug trip going? It's really fun. It's way more fun than I could have ever expected it to be. Heroin's the best. Nobody wants to tell you, but it's the truth. Can I try on your top hat? Sure you can. It fits everyone. Woohoo! You look marvelous. Thanks. One of all right, well, let's find your daughter. So that <laughs> yes, we, can we get keep to talking about it, but we have not moved from this spot. You know what I just realized? Uh huh. There's a door over there and wet footprints leading to it. Is it is it possible? Oh, you're like a detective. Mother de Dios. Before we check that out, though, maybe I should get in the tank and see if something happens to me. Sure, yeah. See, do that we makes have sense. time? Seems yeah, like let's, let's do that. You're going to have to scooch in there because it's uh, made for young people. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof, this is, uh, is kind of nice. Mm. All right. What do, is that? Do, can you hear me? Uh, did you say something? I say, can you hear me? Am I juicy? Can, okay, boy, oh boy. Can you hear can him? You, I can hear him, yeah. Okay. All right. What are you experiencing in the listening tank? I'm, uh, I'm hearing some, uh, pre-colonial music, I presume. Uh, <laughs> what? Pre-colonial music? And, uh, oh, what's all, what are these colors? Oh. How many colors did you see? Well, more every time I swallow. This water is amazing. Oh, no! What, what are you doing? I forgot to give you the warning. There was a warning? Yeah, uh, yeah. Our tax dollars. At <laughs> our tax dollars. Max, I can, I can hear my dad. I can hear his voice. He's slowly going away. Oh, no. It's okay now. But You're with me. I'm, I'm not me. lonely. Don't forget me. Sorry, Harry. Harry. But my dad, he's my warmest parent. Nope, we're your family now. Oh. That's your mother. I'm your husband. <laughs> That's all you need. Okay, as long as you'll never leave. Well, me. people, keep it down out here. I'm trying to scream at movie. <gasps> Honey, what are you doing out here? Mom. Are you high on drugs? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. you are. I see your hallucination, and he's wearing a top hat he's like so heroin cute. is known to do. Uh oh, I'm out of here. Oh no, Harry! Mom. Where is I'll your god? Uh, where's oh. your goddamn father? I'm right here. I was just in a tank full of water, and then I exited through a door, following some wet footprints. Oh, when have I not heard that story? This before? time it's this time it's true. Yeah, that's uh, like it was true that your penis got caught in that woman. <laughs> That was strange. He turned into a sort of ape man, and then he ran out of the record store. I know. Did you want to get some Cuban food? Yes. How about, did you want to get some Cuban food at my house? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. I'm just going to heat up some Swanson's Hungry Man dinners, <laughs> but I'm Cuban, so uh, it comes as Cuban food. Oh, I like how you think. Hey, Julio, here's his heroin. Mom, Dad, I... I'm feeling happier than I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> I feel like I could go to space right now. I'm oh, so happy. Space. Uh, Our tax dollars at work. That's, no more taxes. That's what I was going to say. Oh. You were? I, you know, I've... This is strange. I've, turns out I've missed you. Oh, I, uh, I have to confess, um, I keep going to movie theaters because I know that you like movies. And I, I hope you're there. Well, I guess we're out back. It yeah. Technically counts. It's good to see you. It's good, it's good, it's good to see you. I'm sure. I'm sure menopause hasn't fully set in. Uh, well, uh, sometimes I'm really warm, and I've heard that's pleasurable to enter. Uh, Wait a second. This is supposed to be about me. Oh, <laughs> I gave uh, my life to you. I gave my uterus to you. And nothing can ever be about me. Welcome. To the world. Yeah. There's, this is all that taxpayer freedom you were looking for. Enjoy it. Enjoy your heroin-addicted homeless husband. I love him. <laughs> all right. And whatever this other mom you've been screaming about is. Harry. All right. 
Look, your mother and I are gonna get back together. We're gonna go live in our house and you can buy all the records that you want. This is half good news. <laughs> which which part? The records, Dad. Is the that's the good part. You guys make each other miserable. We have today. Yeah. It's but surely the random meeting in the alley behind a movie theater next to a record store is that fate's way. has hallucinogenic tanks should not have should not have swallowed all that liquid. That was that was a, a mistake. I'm regretting fully. But just as I'm kneeling here in front of you, <gasps> holding up an empty hand that I wish had a ring box in it. Yeah. <laughs> if you would ever have given me that ring back, I could offer it to you. Oh, it's, again. Um, I keep it. Um, wow. I turn it. That, your fingers are bloated. Uh, good heavens. Yeah. That's never coming off. <laughs> and maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. I love you. I, uh, I stopped loving you yeah. entirely. But now it's back somewhat. Is that, do you love me too now? What's that? Do you love me too? <laughs> anyway. I love you, Dad. Yeah, yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do this thing. All right. Will you... Halt our divorce proceedings. <laughs> with I me. will. Max isn't breathing. Max. I'm right here. Don't. All I ask is one thing, little lady. What is it? Do this last bit of heroin with me, <laughs> and we'll have sex, and we'll space jam. <laughs> That's three requests. I mean, well, I don't want to be. You said one. Uh, well, I don't want to be the heroine I'm here. about to die. Are you gonna count? I'll do anything, anything for you. Oh. Anything. Okay. Any three things. I love you. I love you, too. Well, you know, that's how uh, Sergeant Pepper came to be. You know, it was all about... Uh, it was really meant to be the story of a young girl who marries a, a homeless tramp and uh, has <laughs> has his heroine baby and then it brought back an estranged husband and wife together. Really? Yeah, yeah, it came true. It was... <laughs> it was. <laughs> we thought we were just making it up, you know. Mm -hmm. We were just in the studio doing our drugs that we do all the time. Yeah, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, right? Yeah, that means LSD, right? It's yeah. like a drug. And so uh, we had this story and we all, we all fell about laughing, you know, saying, uh, oh, a homeless guy and a little bit heroin sprite. I don't want to be rude. What? Go ahead, uh, no. Which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm Paul. Oh, okay, you know? okay. Can't you tell I'm doing the thumbs up all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I, now I see it. <laughs> are any of the other Beatles here? Oh, let's take a look around. Who's who've we got here? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here too. Oh, I'm here too. I'm always here. The whole, oh. the whole gang's here. Everyone sounds so Liverpudlian. It's, I can't. Oh. Well, we can't help it. You know, it's how we talk and all. <laughs> anyway, so uh, no one else was ever meant to hear Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It was just supposed to be exclusively in that Miami record store in 1967. Oh, I've heard of uh, you know niche marketing, but you know that's very niche. Well, we were millionaires you know we could do whatever we wanted so yeah. we said let's release an album for just one <laughs> record store and they can only be listened to in a tank <laughs> well that's um all the time we have for the Beatles <laughs> just crazy <laughs> well I'm glad we got to reunite here in 1979 that was Paul McCartney here on WX 17 Miami <laughs> Next five up, five after ten, ten after five. Uh, next up, uh, <laughs> our predictions for the eighties. Please uh, call in. The winner gets a free Vista Cruiser and a trip to Miami, where they get to come on the radio station with Dan and I and have a couple of laughs. Yeah, huh? have a couple of laughs, drink a couple of beers, knock it old school. Vietnam's over. Let's have fun. Yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you as always by cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. Have some today. <laughs> wow. What a story, you guys. <laughs> it all worked out great for everyone, I think. I think so. Even the, even the heroin didn't seem to affect people that badly. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It was a different time. It was a different time. Things have changed. Folks, that's our show. Colleen, what do you want to tell the people about? Where can they find you online? Well, there's my Twitter account, which is at Colleen Smith, which is Colleen, C-O-L-L-E-E-N-S-M-I. Start to write out Colleen Smith, then <laughs> towards the end, quit. Because yes. if you don't know it, there's a lot of Smiths in the world. Absolutely. Or at least in uh, the Caucasian countries. <laughs> um, and then uh, the other thing is we're starting up a podcast that by the time this airs, 
uh, should be up and running. It's very exciting. And right now we have a. Uh, a You've Twitter. hidden this from me. No, it just. It just <laughs> uh, it's called. Uh, it's called my first time. So the uh, Twitter handle is at my first time pod, like my first time podcast. And we have guests, and they talk about their first time. So we've done virginity, and we just did a uh, first time we questioned my sexuality. And this is a this is a live show, right? We done you it record. live, yeah. Okay. And now we're gonna uh, try to do it. Uh, we're going to try to in record studio. it. Yeah, yes. in, in studio. Fantastic. And people will be able to find that on the usual podcast places. Yes, they yes. should be. They, they follow the Twitter account to find out. Very exciting. It's a future thing that hasn't ex- actually happened yet. So. Exactly. I understand. But and, by the time, but now yeah. that people are listening to this, in our future, which is their present. Yeah. For some people, their distant past. <laughs> yeah. May I, Shout out to people listening to this in 2020. <laughs> Thanks for finally checking it out, guys. <laughs> They won't understand any of our references. No, there will be no more podcasts. And the other thing is this will be the day after I turned 36. So happy, happy birthday, birthday to, you. to me. Happy birthday. Happy, birthday. Birthday to you. happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. You are one year older today. That's right, Mildred and Patty Hill. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. <laughs> Mark Evan Jackson, where can people find you online? Uh, on Twitter, primarily, at Mark Evan Jackson, M-A-R-C-E-V-A-N-J-A-C-K-S-O-N. Marcevon Jackson. Marcevon Jackson. <laughs> and what would you like to tell people about? I'd like to tell people about the Detroit Creativity Project and that they can check it out at DetroitCreativityProject.org or DCPImprov.org. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit that teaches middle and high school students in the city of Detroit to uh, to improvise and it, because it's a great life skill to, uh, for confidence and for uh, creativity and curiosity and uh, please support us check it out 5013C <laughs> Carla yes what would you like where can people find you online uh, at Carla Kakowski mm-hmm. C-A-C-K-O-W-S-K-I and I would love to promote something. I wish you would. <laughs> uh, I'll be in Austin at the Out of Bounds Improv Festival over Labor Day weekend with Orange Tuxedo. Nice. <laughs> Who else is in Orange Tuxedo? I know of that name. A Craig Kakowski. Not funny. Is it just the two of you? It's yous? just the two of us. Love it's a two-person it. improv show. Love so it. So that's where we'll be. Love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also the DCP. Yes. Oh, DCP. Nice. Yep. DCP. Love it. One, three, C. <laughs> Derek, where can people find you online? Did I ask you that already? You did. did. That's okay. All right. Asked and answered. <laughs> moving on. Evan Schletter. Evan Schletter on Twitter. Go to EvanSchletter.com to get Evan's albums, which you should do because Evan Schletter is only the best. For myself. No, you shut up. It's on YouTube. It's on Hulu. Hulu don't say Hulu Plus anymore. Even mm-hmm. Hulu Plus said don't call us Hulu Plus anymore. Well, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hulu Plus. You made us call you a weird nickname that you made up for yourself, and then you're like, I don't want to be that anymore. <laughs> anyway, that's where you can watch our show. Spontaneous Nation Live happens Saturday, September 12th. That is going to be fun. The live shows are always a blast. Please do come out to that show. Look for details of who the guests are online. Uh, go to pauleftompkins.com slash live for tickets and information. R- please rate the podcast highly on all your uh, rating platforms, wherever pod- where, however you consume podcasts. If there is a way to give us a good rating, please do, because it helps spread the word about the podcast and it attracts people more ear, more ear, ear balls to the, to the show. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're not sure what to write... Uh, let me. Give, I'll give you a little phrase. You can work this into your review. This is a jumping off point for you. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I thought I knew what entertainment was. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm not wrong about a lot of things. I'm a college graduate. But this is one time I had to eat my own shoe. Spontaneous Nation is the greatest. Okay? <laughs> so just work that in there. Um, if you'd like to donate to the show, you can do so on the Spontaneous Nation page on Earwolf. Uh, you can also find forms there where you can discuss the show. Uh, there is a thread where you can ask me questions about the show, um, and I'm happy to answer them. If they're real questions, joke questions, will not get asked. <laughs> but at least you got your joke in there. <laughs> we have fun separately. Uh, I, we do, do we have any shout-outs for this episode, Ryan, or no? Engineer Ryan says, no, we do not. No one gives a good goddamn this week, but maybe next week will be a different story. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins, Evan Schletter, et al. Saying, Semper in presenti!
Again, we'd like to thank OxyBump for sponsoring today's Spontanea Nation. All natural and unique, only OxyBump harnesses the power of oxygen to treat nasal congestion and sore throat. Their product line includes a children's cold and flu nasal spray, a sore throat spray, a hay fever allergy spray, and sinus congestion relief. OxyBump is infused with the finest sourced plant and mineral extracts and provides safe, non-addictive relief of congestion, allergies, cold, and sore throat. And it's available nationwide at Target. Just look for the bright and fun colored boxes in the cough, cold, and allergy aisle. Or go to Oxy. Oxybump.com and enter code PFT20 for 20% off. Oxybump, oxygen powered relief. Steven, I'm looking for a short podcast that I can get a huge amount of information from. I have an idea, James. You know what I think we should do? Tell I think, me. I think we should make one. Let's do it. Let's call it Question of the Day. Um, I, I love it. Here's what we do every day, we come up with one question. And I'll ask it to you, or you ask it to me, and then the other one answers. Simple as that. And we've got to make it no longer than 10 minutes, or around 10 minutes. Sure. And it'll sound kind of like this. What words do you think the English language needs? What words or expressions are missing? What can you teach me now in the next 10 minutes that will be useful for the rest of my life? What is the best way to start an engaging conversation with a stranger? Has your memory suffered when you were in your late 40s? I can't remember back to the late four. <laughs> Are we recording? I don't know, but shouldn't waste good conversation. Yeah, yeah, no, let's on we're, just conversation. We're, we're recording. I'm Stephen Dubner from Freakonomics Radio. And I'm James Altucher from Everywhere, the Internet. I, I try to be. And we have a brand new podcast called Question of the Day. You can find us at earwolf.com, iTunes, or your favorite podcasting app. This has been an Earwolf Media Production. Executive Producers Jeff Ulrich, Scott Ackerman, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. EarwolfRadio.com The Wolf Dead.